The Beatles also has a rich heritage, like I said, with entertainment. You may have heard the stories or been there to experience the unforgettable barbecue. The first one was built in 1805 in London. By the time it landed in Macon, Georgia, it was June 28, 1928. David Stanley says Pig and Whistle's heyday wasn't until the mid 60s. I went to work at Pig and Whistle in 1966. I was 15 years old and what they call a cowboy. The history behind the restaurant. Little Richard Penniman worked at the Pig and Whistle. Oldest friend worked at the Pig and Whistle. Is almost just as rich as their world class barbecue sauce. So it has a unique flavor, unique taste that people can identify with that remember the Pig and Whistle, but it has a unique flavor for people being introduced to it for the first time. The barbecue spot that once was is no longer in Macon. Pig and Whistle was a great time in my life, and I will always cherish your memories. But you can still find a little piece of it in every bottle of their famous barbecue sauce. A lot of people a little bit older than me um, have a lot of great memories of the Pig & Whistle barbecue. Travis Jean on Cherry Street is one of the stores where you can buy some of Pig & Whistle sauce. Um, I've had a lot of customers come in and say that they grew up on Pig & Whistle and so it definitely adds to our mix of stuff here at Travis Jean. And even though they closed in December of 1978, you can still remember the good old times by simply popping open a bottle of Macon's musical heritage. Owner Mark Hooten says they've considered bringing the Pig and Whistle restaurant back to Macon, but for now you can get a taste of the legendary sauce this Saturday at the corner of First and Poplar Street during the Cherry Blossom Festival. The Pig and Whistle barbecue sauce will also be making its debut in Publix grocery stores very soon. I am so, so excited. Thank you for that report there, Joy Dukes in the studio with us today. Well, coming up on